So this is the Sonos Era 300. Now per Sonos's CEO, this is a new era for music. Now without a doubt, the Sonos Era 300 sounds great, but there's definitely a lot that you should know about this great sounding speaker before you buy it. Regarding pricing, the Aero 300 retails for $450, and given that this is a Sono speaker, I don't expect it to go on sale all that often, and if it does, it's not going to go on sale by much. Now, if you're a Sonos fanboy, and if you already have other Sonos products, then you're going to be very happy with this speaker. But if this is your first Sonos speaker, then you are going to want to pay attention, and you might be better off with something else. Nonetheless, if you want to pick this speaker up, it'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, pick up a big hit approved hat. It helps the unsponsored and unbiased reviews coming. We've got trucker hats and snapbacks. Now first, I want to talk about the setup process of this speaker because this is just one of the things that I dislike most about Sonos. Now before you can actually even use the speaker, you got to connect it up to Wi-Fi and register it to your account. And personally, I just hate that this is even a thing. And since this is a Wi-Fi first speaker, you got to make sure that wherever you place it, it's going to have a solid Wi-Fi connection because if not, you're going to have a bad time. Also, since the speaker has upward firing tweeters, you are going to want to put it somewhere where it's top isn't obstructed, which means you can't put it in like, let's say a cabinet. Ideally, you want the speaker to have a direct line of sight to your ceiling. And also, this thing is pretty dense, weighing in at almost 10 pounds, but it doesn't take up too much surface area. Now, overall, I like the overall look of this speaker. It's got a unique design to it. It's using matte plastics and it comes in either black or white. So this thing should be able to fit in almost anywhere. And I also really appreciate that it comes included with a decently long six foot power cable. And we've got touch controls up top. Touch controls that you can deactivate from their app, which might be important if you've got a little one in the house. The only thing that I don't like about this speaker is how janky this power cable looks. It just sticks out the back, whereas with the Aero 100, it's neatly tucked away under the speaker. But now let's talk about connectivity because there's a lot to break down here. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is a Wi-Fi first speaker. So wherever you place it, you want to make sure that it has a solid Wi-Fi connection. Now, if you're an iPhone user, then using the speaker is going to be super easy because you can just stream music to it by using AirPlay. Whereas if you're an Android user, the speaker doesn't have Chromecast support. So if you want to stream music to it, you're going to have to open up Sonos's app. You're going to have to link your streaming service of choice, and you're going to have to choose your music through Sonos's app. These are all just extra steps that I don't want to have to do when all I want to do is just listen to music with my speaker. So personally, I do feel that if you do decide to pick up the speaker, then your life is going to be a little easier if you're an iPhone user. However, something that's new for Sonos here is that this speaker now has Bluetooth. I know it's crazy to have Bluetooth on your speaker, but sometimes you just need Bluetooth. So if you're an Android user, you can always make your life a little easier by using a Bluetooth connection with this speaker. But also Bluetooth is just important to have on your speaker because this way you can share your speaker with someone else without having to share your Wi-Fi password. But now this leads us to the USB-C port on the back. Now, Sono says that you're not supposed to use this USB-C port as a charging port for your phone, but I've been charging my phone without any issues. But obviously, you're not going to have any fast charging. However, this USB-C port is supposed to be used as a line in so that you can use this speaker with a wired connection if you really want to. The problem here is, is that this speaker does not come included with the USB-C to audio jack adapter. That's sold separately. And personally, I do feel that this is a little ridiculous. The speaker should just have a built in audio jack or at the very least come included with the adapter. But also, Sonos sells a separate adapter that has an audio jack and ethernet port on it, just in case you want to hardwire the speaker into your network. Now, I still feel that the speaker should have an audio jack built into it because I feel that a decent amount of people will might want to use the speaker with a wired connection. However, with the ethernet port, I do feel that is a much more niche scenario. But wait, we're not done about talking about the connectivity on this speaker. Now, in general, this speaker doesn't have a lot of physicality to its base, but you can always fix that by connecting any of Sonos's wireless subwoofers to this speaker. So this way, you're going to have a lot more physicality in your music. 
But also, if you were to get two of the same types of speakers, you can always use them as surround sound speakers with your Sonos soundbar. Just keep in mind, you can only do this if you have a Sonos Arc, which I do feel is due for an upgrade, or with the Sonos Beam Gen 2. Basically, in order for this to work with the Aero 300, you need a soundbar that has Dolby Atmos support, and right now only the Arc and Beam Gen 2 have Dolby Atmos support. But next up, there are the voice assistants on this speaker. Now, you can use Sonos' own voice assistant, and with it, you're going to be able to control your music playback, you can group your speakers together, and you can also ask Sonos to play music in specific rooms. Or, you can also use this speaker as an a smart speaker, but unfortunately there is no built-in Google Assistant. Now, even though this speaker does have built-in microphones in it so that you can talk to your voice assistant and so that it can calibrate itself to the shape of your room, if you're privacy conscious like I am, then you can always deactivate the microphones on this speaker by using the switch on the back. And this is going to disconnect all of your microphones from power from a hardware level. It's like disconnecting your TV from the wall outlet. It's gonna be completely dead. But with all of that out of the way, we can finally start talking about how this speaker actually sounds. Now, regarding speaker setups, the speaker has a pair of woofers that shoot out the sides, and there's a total of four tweeters on this speaker. There's one front woofering tweeter, there's a pair of tweeters that shoot out the sides, and there's one tweeter that shoots upwards. So just given the speaker's speaker setup, you're going to want to place it somewhere where its top isn't obstructed, and you also want to place it somewhere where it's just not going to be cluttered by things being all around it. Basically, you want to give the speaker some space to breathe. Now, before we jump into the sound cells, I do have to point out that through Sonos' app, you can customize its EQ. You can adjust the bass or treble. Now, out of the box, this speaker does sound very flat, so I do like to increase its bass by 5 clicks. But now we're going to jump into the sound test. Now, I know this isn't an apples to apples comparison, but I do feel that it is a fair comparison price wise. We're going to be comparing the Aero 300 to the Sony XG500, which has dual frontward firing woofers, dual frontward firing tweeters, and dual passive radiators that shoot out the sides. And we're also going to be including the JBL Boombox 3 here, which has a frontward firing subwoofer, dual frontward firing woofers, dual frontward firing tweeters and dual passive radiators that shoot out the sides as well. Fortune 
Now, max volume-wise, the Aero 300 gets impressively loud for its size, because when compared to both the Boombox 3 and XG500, the Aero 300 is very compact. However, these other two speakers were playing at a slightly lower volume, and in general, these other two speakers do get noticeably louder than the Aero 300 at max volume. But regardless, I'm not going to deduct any points on the Aero 300 here, because the Aero 300 is going to have no problem evenly filling a large or medium sized room with sound. Now, sound performance-wise, the Aero 300 doesn't have a ton of physicality in its bass, but personally, I'm not too surprised because Sonos's speakers never really have too much physicality in their bass, but like I mentioned earlier, you can always connect one of Sonos's wireless subwoofers to the speaker to compensate for its lack of physicality in its bass. However, where the Aero 300 really shines is just how natural and how lifelike it can sound. With the Boombox 3, it does sound a little more to the brighter side, whereas with the XG500, it does sound warmer and a little more narrow. Whereas with the Aero 300, it's right in the middle. It sounds more open than the XG500, it's got prominent vocals, but more importantly, the highs aren't overemphasized like with the Boombox 3. However, just given the speaker's layout, the speaker does an incredible job of just sounding super open. And also, thanks to the upward firing tweeters found on the speaker, that's what gives this speaker Dolby Atmos support. Now, what Dolby Atmos is, instead of your music just coming out of the left side and out of the right side, Dolby Atmos is also going to give your music a sense of verticality to it. That's why I've already mentioned multiple times why it's so important to not obstruct the top of this speaker. You want to place the speaker somewhere where it's going to have a room to breathe but more importantly so that it has a direct line of sight to your ceiling so that it can bounce sound off of the ceiling itself. But regardless, whether you're listening to Dolby Atmos content or not, because everything doesn't automatically just have Dolby Atmos, the speaker is still going to sound really good. So overall, I can't deny that this is a great sounding speaker. Thanks to its speaker setup, the Aero 300 does a really good job of evenly filling a room with music and it also has very impressive instrument separation. And it also gets impressively loud for its compact size. My only drawback is that it does lack a little bit when it comes to physicality in its bass. Nonetheless, the Sonos Aero 300 is a great sounding speaker, but I do feel that you are paying a premium for it because it's a Sonos speaker and because it's a smart speaker. Now, if you already have a Sonos soundbar or any other Sonos speaker, then the Aero 300 is going to be a great addition to your setup. Or if you plan on buying more Sonos speakers in the future, then the Aero 300 is an amazing place to start. But I do feel that there are some things that you should keep in mind before you buy this speaker. First off, I do feel that your life is going to be a little easier if you're an iPhone user, because since this is a Wi-Fi first speaker, AirPlay is kind of important. I also really dislike how aggressive Sonos is to get you to sign into your Sonos account before you can actually use the speaker. And if you do plan on using the speaker with a wired connection, just be prepared to buy the USB-C to audio jack adapter, which is sold separately. So if you're not already heavily invested in Sonos's ecosystem, or if a voice assistance isn't super important to you, or if you don't really care to have your speaker connected up to Wi-Fi, then you can always go for a more affordable solution, or you can always get more bang for your buck with another option out there. But if you are set on buying the Sonos Aero 300, it truly is a great sounding speaker. It does a great job of giving you a lifelike representation of what you're listening to. I just feel that you're paying a Sonos a tax for it. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video. So hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular. So I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.